This show is intended for general purposes only as individual situations may vary. Statements made should not be relied upon as recommendations or solicitation. When discussed, past performance is no guarantee or indication of future results. Nelson Financial Planning offers security through Nelson IVES Brokerage Services, member FINRA and SIPC. Good Sunday morning. This is Bud Hedinger. Next on News Radio 1025 WFLA, the longest running radio show in Central Florida. Dollars and cents with my good friend Joel Garris from Nelson Financial Planning. You can call him at the office this week at 407 629 6477 to schedule your free consultation to discuss your retirement plans. Or you can talk to him right now at 407 916 5400. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program Dollars and Cents. My name is Joel Garrison. For the next hour here on News Radio 1025 WFLA and simulcasting over on the AM dial at 540 AM, it is the program that is, in fact, Central Florida's longest running radio show. Dollars and Cents started back in the 80s. With my father-in-law, Jack Nelson, continued today by me, yours truly, Joel Garris. Here's what we've been doing all those many years and all those many episodes. Uh, We've been talking about financial stuff on the program. So a host of wide-ranging issues uh, we've certainly covered over the years. Uh, we'll, We'll try and talk on some timely uh, topics today. Uh, obviously, uh, we'll be chatting a little bit about uh, what went on last week uh, in the markets. Uh, tough week in the markets, the worst week in the markets since January of 2016. Uh, I, I guess that gives a little perspective, right? Uh, when we say something is the worst since, you always think it's the worst in in a very very long time okay but when it's the worst since January 2016 that just makes it something that hasn't really occurred for a couple of years so uh we'll get some perspective on the week that was uh also talk a little bit about tariffs some some fascinating two two really fascinating Articles in the Wall Street Journal yesterday, one about China and and one about Brexit. Um, if, if you get an opportunity to to read them, so some really some some kind of some interesting perspective uh, that that you, you may not have heard much of, and and so we'll talk a little bit about that because I think those issues go hand in hand. Uh, and then, of course, um, yesterday, uh, all of the marches all over uh, the country, uh, one in downtown Orlando. Uh, obviously, uh, there's an issue that that needs to be dealt with that uh, there just hasn't been the political momentum uh, or uh, interest to deal uh, with um the gun issue, and for that matter, uh, the issues that have led to folks using um, these 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 weapons and, and shooting people, uh, innocent people, uh, things like mental health. And all that. So it's not obviously just one. Pe- it's the whole uh, the whole thing all wrapped up, uh, just as it might be if you were uh, thinking about investing with a social conscience as as well. And and, and so we, we thought it uh, an interesting topic to try and tackle here on the program. Uh, you hear a lot of, of conversation about social investing or social conscience, conscience investing. And, and, and so we thought it would be timely to address that given uh, the, the elevated social consciousness that uh, certainly – comes about as a result of um, of the marches uh, that were organized really throughout um, uh, throughout the country. Uh, so those are the things that we will uh, we will hit today. Uh, and then also, uh, I want to recap 
uh, the conversation this past week at our client meeting where we um, where, where we had one of our, our regular client meetings. We have four of those a year, and then we do an appreciation event in May. Uh, so we had to do a total of five during the year. Uh, this was one of the ones where we have a speaker. And, uh, and it really was timely uh, in that uh, it was an in-depth uh, discussion about taxes and, and particularly the 2018 taxes. Certainly, we've talked a, a lot about that. We did the whole show last week with Christina to talk about um, uh, taxes but um, so some interesting perspectives, you know, every time you, you hear an analysis on this, uh, on these changes for 2018, uh, there's always something new. So we want to kind of share some of those things as as well. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we'll take your calls. Uh, 407-916-5400, toll free 1-855-545-1025. Certainly crunch time uh, for taxes. Uh, So the clock is running out. Maybe you're mired in the middle of a question on your taxes. Certainly a timely topic for today's discussion. Um, So let's begin. So the the articles that I read yesterday, uh, both involving the, the, the trade uh, the tariffs, uh, and, and obviously that news, it was kind of a confluence of, of a bunch of different things that, that sort of came together last week that, that ultimately uh, kind of disturbed the, 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 the markets. Um, Facebook, <clears throat> obviously the, the, the stories about Facebook and, and privacy, and I'm sorry, I don't know that that's I don't know that that's really new because, you know, when you're signing into these things and they have all this fine print that you blow right by and then, you know, you just hit the button that says allow, you know, when that when that thing pops up and you hit allow, then, you know, you're kind of waving a whole bunch of your privacy. Uh, and that's sort of the business model for Facebook or, or, or a fundamental aspect of the business model of a company like Facebook or Amazon or Google because they, they take that data and they're able to um, almost to the point of predict your consumer behavior. I mean, that, that's the whole concept, okay? Google is, is not a a search engine company. It's an advertising company. I mean, that that's what Facebook is not a, a, a great place to share your experiences. It's an advertising and well, and now they're getting very much into storage and, and things like that. But, but that's the heart of, of their business model. Anyway, a lot of, of attention was directed on that. Facebook obviously has been a very good performing stock. It's a big part of the indexes as well. So, so understand when a component, uh, and, and particularly uh, with the S and P 500, it's a, it's a, it's a market weighted component. So the bigger the company is, the more it's going to affect, uh, the value of that index. So when, uh, a company like Facebook, uh, sort of gets rattled and, uh, certainly this privacy issue was, was, was chomping away, then you're going to see a little bit more of a disproportionate hit to the overall market based upon looking at the the, the index. So so Facebook was one issue last week. Um, the 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 other issue is anytime the Federal Reserve speaks, people listen. Federal Reserve raised interest rates a quarter point, uh, and and that obviously gets people's attention because. Uh, the fear all, is always, well, if the Federal Reserve starts raising rates too quickly, then that could dampen out economic growth. Uh, and then uh, that's always uh, troublesome uh, if the Federal Reserve sort of overcorrects. A, a, a few words on that. Um, it, it, you know, a lot of the debt out there, and I think this is where, um, you know, that, that gets lost in this uh, in this, in the, in these rates, a lot of the existing debt out there 
is disproportionately, uh, historically disproportionate uh, on the fixed rate side of things. I mean, you literally had to have been living under a rock uh, to not realize that over the course of the past five years, we've been in an historically low interest rate environment. So if you've been borrowing money, more often than not, your best route is going to be some type of a fixed rate loan, okay? And when you look at the typical corporate debt, just looking at it from a, from a corporation perspective, what you'll find is that typically about half of corporate debt is fixed rate and about half of it is variable. That's sort of been the historical trend, if you will. If you look at it today, 90% of corporate debt is on a fixed rate basis versus only 10% on a variable. So the, the traditional effect that higher interest rates would have on increasing borrowing costs and how that's going to affect corporations and uh, their profitability it isn't really the issue that it once was because a lot of debt is sitting at fixed rate basis. The concern there is if they go too fast, it seems that they are trying to not do that so far. They've done a pretty good job at sort of navigating the territory uh, since 2008. But yeah, anytime the Fed speaks, uh, it's going <clears> to <throat> attract a lot of attention. Uh, and then number three, of course, uh, is the, the the tariff conversation and, um, um, you know, kind of the, the, the rumors or the reaction that come with uh, that that tariff conversation. Um, it's interesting, NK, that that the tariffs announced affect about sixty billion dollars of products from China, NK, and and sixty so it affects sixty billion of products. Okay, um, the 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 magnitude of the loss last week re- resulted in an erosion of one point eight trillion from the value. Uh, of 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 U.S. equities, so so sixty billion, and then the the emotional reaction resulted in a, a nearly two trillion reaction. I, I think there may be a, a little bit of an overreaction uh, to uh, this story, um, and uh, so certainly we want to flesh that out a little bit more, and we will do that after this break. So stay tuned. We'll talk more about this tariff stuff uh, when we get back here on Dollars and Cents. This is Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning. Also here to take your calls, 407-916-5400, toll free 1-855-545-1025, or the email joel at nelsonfinancialplanning.com. That's how you can get in touch with us. We will talk more about tariffs after this. iHeartRadio is the easy-to-use app for music and radio. Download the free iHeartRadio app today. This is Bud Hedinger. You know, you can talk to Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning right now on Dollars and Cents about anything to do with your money by calling 407-916-5400. Give him a call. It's time to make sense of your dollars. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Dollars and Cents here on News Radio 1025 and uh, WFLA and 540 AM. Uh, here over on the AM dial. Uh, talking a, a little bit, of course, about tariffs this morning. Uh, obviously, last week uh, was a bit of a tough week in the market. For perspective, it's the worst since January 2016. So not really. And, and by the way, it almost uh, was comparable to what we saw the first week of February. Volatility. Yeah. 
has returned to the markets after an abnormally smooth stretch. Volatility is uh, quite normal, uh, but never fun. It really is the is the reality. Uh, volatility uh, does, I guess, keep investors honest because if it was just smooth sailing, everybody would do it. But not everybody's an investor, uh, although a lot more should be that aren't. But uh, from a investment perspective, uh, the volatility is what shakes people out and causes investor behavior and investor emotions and investor reactions to come into play uh, and start, you know, moving the money around. And the data from last week shows just that. I think I saw the number that was $20 billion, uh outflow just last week from equity mutual funds. It is a sad reality that investors don't get nearly the return that they that the overall markets generate because they're busy reacting to the headlines. The headlines come and the headlines go. Meanwhile, human behavior has not changed and that is a very unlikely proposition that human behavior will change. It's been the same behavior for hundreds of years. What do we mean by that? Well, just that basic human desire to want things and to want more and to be better off than what you are now. That creates this massive consumer spending that is a large part of the global economy. It's the biggest part of the global economy. So people are still going to want stuff, whether it's sunny or rainy or whether there's a tariff or whether there's a Facebook or whether there's a rise in interest rates. Uh, People are still going to want stuff. Uh, although their ability to get stuff may be coming with a bit of a higher cost, particularly when you start to talk about uh, tariffs. And, and obviously, we've, we've, when we've talked about this in previous shows, we've expressed some words of caution on this because not, not that um, tariffs in and of themselves have the ability uh, to fundamentally disrupt a growing economy, uh, their biggest immediate impact has to deal with 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 individual companies, but it's it's the emotional effect that can come with that that might very well um, hurt the overall uh, attitude and ultimately have a a sort of a pass through effect that reduces business con confidence uh, that that would that could potentially ultimately lead. To an erosion in the economy. So, so to the extent that these are tailored or targeted and exempt um, other countries or other products and things like that, uh, then uh, perhaps uh, there is um, a path that uh, that doesn't fundamentally uh, get too broad in terms of the disruption to the overall global economy. Um, A a fascinating article in the Wall Street Journal yesterday uh, talking a a lot about this and 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 rightfully pointing out. And and this is, I guess, the piece that that gets forgotten in in the conversation in the mainstream media is China has not been a very amenable trade partner. And, and, And by that, we mean that. Oftentimes, to do business in in China, um, there there's a certain tactic that they use that deals with appropriation of our intellectual property. In, in other words, that they to do business, oftentimes they require the intellectual property of that company 
to be transferred over to uh, a, a Chinese holding company uh, and 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 then how they protect or or not protect that intellectual property uh, has certainly been cause for um, indigestion at at, at, at many a, a, a company. Uh, and so, you know, there is some you know, China's not exactly uh, in, got clean hands, I guess, on a lot of the negotiation strategies and tactics tactics that they use. So, as the Wall Street Journal points out, you know, this this there is some validity in trying to get back to um, a more balanced or a more fair. Uh, type of way of of doing business, but but certainly that has been a background story for for decades. Uh, is that the appropriation by China of 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 intellectual property of companies that do set up shop uh, in in China? So um, certainly uh, some some interesting perspective in that article, along with another article in the Wall Street Journal about the UK. Uh, and the, the headline on that was the UK is doing just fine, thanks, uh, despite all of the prognosticators and um, and the predictions of of dire impact in the in the Brexit situation of a couple of years ago, um, hasn't really come to fruition. Uh, and so the article kind of really gets into the details on that, uh, and um, and and in that respect. Uh, certainly points out that uh, there's there's a little bit more uh, to than than meets the eye in terms of of predictions uh, about uh, uh, what economic activity is or is not going to happen. So the UK's individual economy uh, is actually posting some relatively strong uh, results, even as they negotiate through. Uh, this this Brexit deal. So 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 certainly some interesting perspectives that that we wanted to kind of share with you on uh, sort of the topics of the day: trade and interest rates, uh, and uh, and and Facebook. We'll we'll slide to a break. When we get back from the break. Uh, we'll we'll tackle another timely topic of the day, uh, and and talk about social investing. And and why that that's that's hard to do, um, uh, and so we'll talk about the pros and cons of that when we get back here on dollars and cents. This is Joel Garris. We've got open lines at four zero seven nine one six five four zero zero, toll free one eight five 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 four five one zero two five. Those are the numbers to call on in and be a part of the program. We'll be back after this to talk a little bit about social investing. This is Bud Hedinger. You know, you can talk to Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning right now on Dollars and Cents about anything to do with your money by calling 407-916-5400. Give him a call. It's time to make sense of your dollars. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Dollars and Cents here on News Radio 1025 WFLA and simulcasting over on the AM dial at 540 AM. Uh, this part of the show, we're going to talk a little bit about investing with a social conscience. Obviously, a timely topic given um, the marches uh, yesterday, uh, uh, obviously in favor of some additional form of gun control, background checks, all those kinds of things, certainly uh, that is a major problem that needs tackling. Unfortunately, as with most major problems, there's a lot of different aspects to it, right? It's not just about the guns. It's about the people that are using them uh, and uh, the mental health of those people that are using them. Um, and, and And so you're hearing an awful lot more about this concept of social investing and, and social conscience. Uh, many 
uh, are are suggesting some kind of a new paradigm that uh, it, it's not really how uh, you know how you make the money uh, is is as important as as how much you make and and your approach and how you do it. Um, I, I think a lot of that goes back to just almost fundamentals, right? I mean, if a company is well run, um, it, that 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 ability to be well run usually goes hand in hand with uh, some level of integrity inside that corporation. Very rarely do you see a a, a void of integrity and, and yet somehow the company is successful in what it is doing, right? I mean, if you're void of integrity as a business uh, and you don't really care about what the customer thinks or does, then you're not going to be around very long. You're not going to have a very successful business. So I think there is, there's always a, a piece of that that comes into the mix. Good people usually make good decisions. Uh, and, and so I think there's always that, that piece that's in there. But obviously in today's world, there's a lot greater conversation about, you know, how you make that, that money. And, and we can look at the host of headlines that have come to the forefront over the course of the past couple of years that really that really drive that 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 point home. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of conversation about uh, about gun manufacturers and um, and and you know avoiding them uh, from uh, an ownership perspective. Uh, but but you get into that slippery slope. Where where do you where do you where do you stop that 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 slope, uh, if you will? Uh, you know, a company like Walmart or or Dick's, which which sells the guns, uh, aren't they just as much at fault as the manufacturer? And and then you know, where do you wind up on that so uh, on that on that slippery slope? And that's one of the hard things about social in, investing. And we see a lot of 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 folks in the mutual fund industry that are really going to, um, you know, kind of these catchwords or these catchphrases and, and, and whether it's social investing or whether it's sustainable investing or being socially responsible, there's a bunch of different terms out there that sort of all suggest or mean the same thing is that somehow uh, there's a more of a focus on how that money is made uh, rather than uh, on how much money is, is getting made. And, and I, I personally, I, I just think that the mutual fund industry is a very good marketing machine. And I, I think that a lot of these use of these terms and words and things like that are, are, are just that. Uh, don't really have necessarily anything to do with whether a company is, is performing well or, or not. Uh, it's really intended to attract attention to get people to invest money in that particular fund. The, the issue that that of course we have with that is that means that you're putting your fu- your money into a fund that usually doesn't have a very proven track record, and uh, typically a fund that is newer also has higher expenses. So we're always a little kind of reluctant um, to 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 kind of get too engaged when uh, the industry as a whole is is really focusing on um, some type of labeling, which is another way to um, to inspire marketing and 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 kind of where you know certainly a lot of bad actors that have seen the value of their companies go down. I mean, I mean, you could put Facebook in that category this past week where it's sh- sharing your personal information. You could put Wells Fargo into that. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, creating a bunch of false accounts for a bunch of people uh, to generate fee. I mean, that's not okay. And their stock price has suffered as a result of that. You could put Wynn Resorts into that. Their stock price suffered uh, when the head of the company uh, got tangled, <clears throat> excuse me, got tangled up in a bunch of, of, Things, you know, involving, uh, you know, extracurricular activities. So so where 
or for that matter, Equifax, right, which collects your data and then, you know, and then can't, you know, prevent a breach, which is really hard to do anyway. So so when you start to talk about the, the, this these categories, you know, I would I would caution about jumping fully in uh, to this to this socially responsible, sustainable investing type of, of movement out there, because in our minds, it just feels more like there is a marketing conversation going on here rather than a performance conversation going on there, because it's really hard to draw the line of where you, 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 you draw the line, say, for example, <clears throat> on the gun issue or uh, on the oil issue or on, I mean, you, you can look at the list of issues and everybody's issues and concerns socially is, you know, is different from the next person. So uh, the, what, what the, the, there, there's an issue with how you actually define uh, what it is that that fund is doing. And for that matter, um, what, how they're making that de- that decision because your version of of what needs to be done may be very different from the next person's version, and so it really does get into how you define and how you exclude and and ultimately how you control that um, that that fundamental al- allocation, and so it, I think. Anytime you start running into these issues of, okay, well, what exactly are we excluding and from the list and what exactly are we buying and where, where down the slippery slope are we winding up, uh, then I think you start to lose exactly what's the, the true asset class of a particular fund that is, uh, that is, that is focusing on uh, these these social investing concepts. I mean, not to say that I'm not saying it's not, you know, a, 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 an important um, um, consideration. But I think when you create a fund that is solely focused on that as the investment objective, that 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 gets a little hard in terms of 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 definition and where you wind up on. Uh, that that slippery slope and and what that means for you is going to be different than what that means for somebody else. Maybe you don't really care about what Wells Fargo did. Uh, meanwhile, if you were one of the people that they they created those fake accounts for, you might feel very differently. Uh, and and so I think uh, when we start to talk about uh, this this marketing effort by the fund industry. We have to be very careful on, you know, kind of how these labels get thrown around because there's no clear definition. And anytime there's no clear definition on what's in, what's out, and and where you wind up, um, where you wind up on the slope, uh, then it always strikes me that that sounds a little bit more like good marketing rather than uh, actually a, a, a real uh, investing concept. Um, and, and and certainly, um, and 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 certainly, it's it's incredibly hard to to define that and and where you wind up. So I, I would I would be cautious about that. I think some of the studies also, uh, you know, that that these these funds are newer newer funds have a tendency to underperform. Uh, they also have a tendency to be a little bit higher cost, uh, and and so other reasons I think are at work where we would generally be steering clear of 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 those types of funds just because they're those types of funds. I don't think you invest in a fund just because it's got a great label. I, I think you need to look at the track record, the underlying expenses, and exactly where it fits in to your overall allocation. Is this a large more growth oriented fund is this a large more dividend paying fund is this a global fund is this a mid cap fund Th- those i think are the much more important questions to ask when you're trying to figure out your overall diversification and allocation so 
Uh, just some comments on that. Again, uh, trying to be as timely as possible in light of the issues uh, that many are talking about uh, this morning a- after obviously some very successfully organized um, marches, certainly a lot of people out across the country. Uh, we'll go to uh, our last break. When we get back, we will uh, talk a little bit about the meeting last week, specifically um, about uh, the tax conversation uh, that we had on Tuesday uh, with, uh, with with our clients uh, at one of our normal orderly events. Uh, so got some interesting perspective on that. Uh, that we'll use to wrap up the show. Also have time to squeeze a call in or two in that last segment at 407-916-5400. Toll free 855-545-1025. This is Bud Hedinger. You know, you can talk to Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning right now on Dollars and Cents about anything to do with your money by calling 407-916-5400. Give him a call. It's time to make sense of your dollars. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Dollars and cents here on News Radio 1025 WFLA, 540 AM. This is, of course, Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning. Had a good meeting this past week. Uh, well, it was a good meeting in that we had uh, an excellent speaker and uh, we also uh, had a very timely and informative conversation about uh, the topic, which, of course, was uh, all of the tax changes. Um, and uh, but but unfortunate, uh, really, in terms of the timing, because if we think back to Tuesday, particularly right here in central Florida, uh, it was when um, the weather alerts were going off, you know, off the charts. Uh, and uh, certainly my phone was was buzzing and all those kinds of things with a tornado alert and it First time I've ever sat in the office in uh, in Winter Park uh, and and heard a tornado siren. Uh, I didn't even know we had them, um, but lo and behold, we did hear that. So that unfortunately kind of reduced our, our our numbers, as you might well imagine, because many people say, "Well, wait a minute, I don't want to get on the road in a tornado." Uh, and but of course, by the time the event actually started, uh, that most of that had had passed. So uh, still was able to, to carry on uh, with the event. And, 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 you know, just every time you hear an analysis of this new tax law, you know, there's always something new because this thing is really packed full of, of changes. And, you know, I, I don't think it, it can be understated uh, that one of the, the, the whole points of, of this tax uh change that happened uh, and and will happen obviously coming into play for 2018 is is to simplify things and and what that means is that uh, you you're not going to have to go through the process of organizing your deductions like you used to do and 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 so that's the simplification part of it is that uh, there's no longer that process of of pulling together your charitable contributions. Well, I mean, there still is that process, but many more of of us who took advantage of that process, it's simply not going to be worth it because the standard deduction obviously uh, has jumped up so high uh, to that twenty four thousand level for a couple over the age of sixty five. It's actually twenty six thousand six hundred. So if you're sitting there with sixteen, seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars of itemized expenses. You're not going to get you're nowhere near close to what the new standard deduction is. So it's not going to be worth the effort to pull all of that together, uh, combined with the fact that many of those itemized deductions have been uh, either eliminated or limited. We all know about the state and local taxes and which include things like sales tax and real estate taxes, that that has been capped at a total of ten thousand dollars. Uh, that is so if you have a couple of properties and you're paying taxes on a couple of properties, you could certainly see a change on that because of that cap. Obviously, if you're in a high income tax uh, real estate uh, tax jurisdiction like a New York or New Jersey or Massachusetts, 
uh, then you're really going to see the effect of of that. Um, <clears throat> but also um, miscellaneous deductions, which would would refer to unreimbursed employee expenses, your union or professional dues, your investment fees, your tax preparation fees, all of those fees that were deductible, okay, as an itemized deduction, they're no longer even deductible. So even if you're still trying to get your uh, deductions itemized, know that a bunch of those deductions that you may have taken in the past are gone, meaning you, you can't even you can't even deduct them. The biggest of those, of course, is investment fees uh, and unreimbursed employment expenses. A lot of folks take uh, advantage of those two in particular, uh, and ultimately uh, they're gone. So if that is gone and you're basically left with charitable or mortgage interest or taxes or medical expenses, then it's a much less uh, information to look at to assemble, particularly since many uh, will wind more will wind up taking the standard deduction. So, so interesting kind of perspective and, and conversation on that. Obviously, the tax rates changed a, a bit. There are some uh, places in in income where your tax rates, uh, you know, sort of slipped up, particularly if you are a a married. A uh, couple, there, there is a little bit around the 400000 mark where you may be paying an effectively a higher tax rate, but most of that income uh, is going to be subject to lower tax rate. There were, in fact, no changes on dividends and capital gains, uh, which means that if, if most of your income right now is coming from dividends and capital gains, you're already enjoying a lower tax rate, uh, and you're going to continue to have that same uh, tax rate going forward. I, I think one of the more interesting uh, comments uh, is is really that a lot of these tax changes are giving with one hand and then taking away with the the other. So so this tax these tax changes once you really start to unpack them is is kind of a take one and get one take one you know give one away uh, in terms of how all of these numbers um, numbers worked out because I, I guess the, 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 the trade-off, particularly on these itemized deductions, is those people that are that have their itemized deductions um, limited, the reality is that a lot of that group was then having to pay alternative minimum tax. And how alternative minimum tax works is it basically limits your deductions anyway and adds a different amount of tax into the mix. And a lot of people didn't see that occur, but the reality is it certainly does occur. And in fact, uh, last year there were 5 million uh, households that were affected by the alternative minimum tax, which, again, basically disallows some of those itemized deductions. As it exists now under the new tax law, yes, you've got less itemized deductions, but far fewer households are going to be affected by the alternative minimum tax. It's estimated that that 5 million number is actually going to drop down to 200,000. So a a, a significant expansion in terms of the income limit, much, much higher that would potentially be subject to the alternative minimum tax a little bit of a trade-off, if you will, on no longer having some of those itemized deductions. At the end of the day, that's that's not going to move your tax picture because the alternative minimum tax has gone away for many Americans that had to deal with that. So so again, you know, it's really kind of a a trade-off situation. The more you dig into it and unpack it, the more you'll see these trade-offs play out in uh, a lot of these tax changes uh, that are due to take effect for this year, 2018. Uh, Well, uh, the music means we are out of time. So we will wrap it up this week here on the program. Thank you all for listening. We will be back next week here on Dollars and Cents. This is Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning. You're listening to News Radio 1025 WFLA. This is Bud Hedinger. 
And you've been listening to Dollars and Cents with Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning. If you missed any part of today's show or want to listen to it again, check out the radio show at www.nelsonfinancialplanning.com or connect with them on Facebook or Twitter. Be sure to call Joel this week at 407-629-6477 to schedule your free consultation to discuss your retirement plan. Fees, commissions, expenses, investment costs come in all shapes and sizes. Do you know how much your investments are really costing you? At Nelson Financial Planning, we believe that costs should be a major consideration in your financial plan. After all, the lower your costs are, the more you get to keep for yourself. This is Joel Garris, and I invite you to get educated about your investment costs. Visit NelsonFinancialPlanning.com or call us today at 407-629-6477 to set up a personal conversation to review your investment costs. That's NelsonFinancialPlanning.com or 407-629-6477 to set up that conversation. A-plus, Better Business Bureau accredited. Nelson Financial Planning offers securities through Nelson Ivest Brokerage Services, member SIPC at FINRA. Listen to Joel Garris on Dollars and Cents every Sunday at 9 a.m. on News Radio 1025 WFLA. This show is intended for general purposes only as individual situations may vary. Statements made should not be relied upon as recommendations or solicitation. When discussed, Discussed, past performance is no guarantee or indication of future results. Nelson Financial Planning offers security through Nelson Ives Brokerage Services, member FINRA, and SIPC.